So far, we have discussed how we can develop a very simple mathematical model for a biological neuron. At the core of it is the understanding that a single neuron is connected to other neurons so that the output of those neurons gets modulated when it is being transmitted by those neurons. So the, a single output of a neuron gets multiplied by a certain weight and is then received by another neuron. And this other neuron is now receiving inputs from a number of other neurons as well. And each of the, their outputs is, get, is getting multiplied by a certain weight. And then what all we do is that we accumulate all of these inputs and we sum them up, which can be done in the form of a dot product that you can see on your screens to compute what is called a net input. Once we have a net input, we can apply an, a nonlinearity on top of that, or we can apply any function, which is called an activation function, on this input to generate the output of that particular neuron. There are different types of activation functions. For example, you may choose to apply a linear activation function. So let's say if you have a neuron over here, let me use my pen. Let's say if you have a neuron over here, what it does, it receives all of these inputs. Let's say x1, x2, up to so on to x d let's say and each of them gets multiplied by a certain weight w1 w2 wd which is the model of the synapses that we have at the interconnection of two neurons so the first thing that happens is that we accumulate the overall input in the sum of product forms and that becomes wd xd so this is your net input for this particular neuron and it can also be written in the form of a dot product w transpose x over here okay this net input is then activate is applied uh, an, act, uh, an activation function is applied so we show the activation function as f and then the output of this neuron over here is the output of f of u okay so that is the output of this particular neuron i'm going to call this y so if you have a linear activation function then what that means is that the net input u gets transmitted as is. So in the activation function f of x, sorry, f of u, if it is equal to u, this is what is called a linear activation. So whatever is the net input, that would be transmitted as is. So we can draw the activation function. Sorry, that's a horrible drawing, but this is a much better one. Okay. So if you have a net input u, the output is also going to be the same thing. So we can have, that means essentially no activation. It's a linear activation, okay? We can have other type of activation functions as well. You can have what is called, for example, a rectified linear output. So that only generates an output whenever there is a, whenever the net input is positive. So its equation can be written as f of x, or you can write it in terms of u as well. So f of u is going to be simply the max of zero and u. So whatever the net input of the, if the net input of the machine learning of the neuron is negative, it does not fire or does not generate any output. But if it is greater than zero, then it essentially generates the same value. Okay. So that is what is called a rectified linear. So there is where, this is where the rectification takes place. Similarly, you can have a step activation in which you have, if the net input to the neuron is zero, it does not fire, but if it is positive, then it generates an output of plus one. So you can write an equation for that. F of u is going to be one if u is greater than equal to zero and zero otherwise. There are other types of activation functions available. For example, the tan hyperbolic function or the sigmoid activation function, which is an equation like this one. There is also a leaky relu. There are practically limitless varieties of activation functions that can be used to develop different types of neuron uh, behaviors of a neuron. Some are quite simple. For example, the, the linear activation is the simplest one. If you, if you think of the representation of this in terms of a machine learning model, then the parameters that you have, the weights that you have, those need to be tuned for a fixed activation function so that the output of your neuron matches a certain target. So let's say if I give you uh, a target, let's say if you're generating, so if, if you think about the structure of a single neuron, 
and you want to write a mathematic single mathematical equation for that this is it you have a, a vector of weights you have a vector of inputs that is x you take the dot product of that to compute the net input you apply an activation function on top of that and you generate your output now let's say if you want the neuron to generate a certain output we can uh, let's say that output the target output we want out of it is t then what we can do is we can adjust these weights these w's or we can tune it much like a radio so that the output of the net output after the application of the activation function matches what we want which is t in this case so what we can do is measure how much error there is so this is the evaluation component of a single neuron so let's say we can use a squared error for a given example and then we can optimize this problem uh, this optimization problem with respect to the weights so remember whenever this weight is going to change that is going to change the products right and then that is going to change the net input and then when we apply an activation function of it over that we get uh, get an output and we can change that output by changing the weights right so we need to optimize the weights of the neural network such that our output of the neuron matches the target that we have for a given example which is x in this case okay so we can do optimization on top of that and that my friends is how you train a single neuron now if you think of it it's a pretty simple model we we have a representation which is simply i'm going to uh, write u is equal to we first compute the net input and then we generate simply f of which is uh, an activation function we apply an activation function to generate a certain output so this is the representation component and then we have an evaluation for a given example x if I know its target t, then I can compute the output or the error between the output and the target. And then what I can do is I can minimize with respect to the weights, the difference between the target and what my neuron is producing. And that is the evaluation component. Or, and then we can optimize over that to tune these weights. And that is how a single neuron can be trained. We have already covered some very simple neural networks or single neural networks in which the activation function that we had was simply linear so if you use f of u is equal to u then what this becomes is t minus w transpose x and we've already covered that when we were talking about linear models and now i hope you understand why we spent so much time on understanding these linear models because they are a very simple form of even neurons so if you have a good understanding there, I don't think there is anything here that uh, should trouble you. It's the same principle, representation, evaluation, and optimization, and we can code it up. We've already done that. I've given you a code in which we have a single neuron, and now I'm gonna call it, earlier I was calling it a linear model. If we have a linear activation function, there's no difference between a linear model, a single uh, a linear model or a linear discriminant and a single neuron. It's the exact same thing. Perceptrons were one of the first neurons that were developed, and we've already coded them up in PyTorch, and you are welcome to review and understand that code. Remember, for a given training data set, all this code does is tries to find those optimal weights that allow you to, to produce a certain output for your training data. Okay, so please go ahead and review that code. There's already a video available on that. And once you have understood that, we can move on to multi-layer perceptrons in which we will be connecting multiple neurons to each other. So it's going to get a bit messy. Thank you.